Yeah, thank you. You may start. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Simone Cresti. I'm the Network Manager of SDSN Mediterranean, and it's my pleasure to moderate this webinar. Uh, I uh, introduce uh, Dr. Marco Forte, General Director of the Monte de Paschi di Siena Foundation, the hosting institution of the in present session of this webinar. Dr. Forte, the floor, is, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I, on behalf of the foundation, the board of, of directors of foundation, uh, of course, we are very, very pleased to uh, host you here. Um, we want to thank you for your attendance, virtual and, of course, in, in presence in, in this room. Uh, of course, we, we follow your your job, your um, actions. Uh, sustainability is, uh, I'd say, the main goal in uh, our philanthropic activities uh, uh, is uh, embedded in our mission. So uh, we are very, very uh, interested in developing this kind of initiatives uh, also in... Uh, um, this is wonderful to say, uh, building. Uh, I know that the, the topics of the, the day is the student mobility. <laughs> I have to say that I have experienced uh, the mobility because of my daughter that <laughs> who lives and work in, uh, in Netherlands. And uh, uh, she, she likes that. Uh, she's very, very happy. So I want to to say you to continue on this uh, approach, uh, uh, the same for the for the teachers. Uh, I think that we have to build uh, uh, and uh, a, a good approach, a new approach for sustainability for the uh, good relationships between uh, the best part of uh, European students. So I don't want to take uh, uh, other time to your uh, to your job, and uh, I want to say uh, uh, good luck uh, for the future uh, for the uh, the reunion, the meeting. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. And now I have the pleasure to introduce Professor Angelo Riccaboni the chair of SDSN Mediterranean and co-chair of SDSN Europe. Thank you. And uh, only a few words uh, on behalf of, uh, I'm bringing here the, the greetings of Jeffrey Sachs, the chair of SDSN Global, and the greetings of Phoebe Conduri and Adolf Kocklek, who are the co-chairs of uh, SDSN Europe. So I'm very pleased that we were able to launch this series of seminar. I would like to thank also Massimiliano Montini, colleague and friend from uh, Europe Direct, Direct Siena and Marco Forte, the, 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 the hosting institution here, the uh, Fondazione Monte Paschi Siena because uh, they gave us the availability of this uh, wonderful location. And uh, I would like to thank, first of all, Cinzia Angeli because she was very, very valuable in order to uh, organize this meeting and um, Marcella Gargano, uh, general director of the Ministry of uh, Education and, and the Uni University and Research, and Patrizia Lombard, the chair of uh, the Association of uh, uh, Universities for Sustainability. So I'm very pleased that we were able to launch this series of seminar, and the rationale behind it is very clear. We have the elections in a few months and we need to make all the youngsters aware of the importance of these, uh, of these uh, elections. So we need that youngsters go and vote because we need that uh, everybody expresses uh, his or her vote, but especially the young ones, because in the future, you will be the ones that uh, will uh, have, uh, will see the effect of what is going on in terms of uh, social environmental sustainability. So it is very important to involve uh, youngsters. And what we thought was uh, to be done was to show to the young generations what Europe is doing in terms of uh, positive initiatives, because uh, we in democracies, 
we tend to only see what is bad. We have this uh, really bad uh, bias that only we consider and we talk with, uh, with the social networks. We only talk about what is bad. Why Europe is really creating a very important environment for all of us. And there are many, many opportunities. So this is the reason why we focus on three topics. One today is student mobility with a huge success of Erasmus. Unfortunately, I was not able to participate to, to the Erasmus program, but everybody is doing it and is unbelievably positive for your, for your future. So one will be today on mobility of students, then on May the 2nd on towards carbon neutrality organized by SDSN Portugal, and then on inclusive societies, May 22nd, organized by the German network. So we want to mobilize youngsters. This is the, the aim that SDSN Europe will be pursuing in the next few years. And we will be very pleased to discuss also with you and others online how to do it. We think this is a nice start, but we want to go ahead and we hope to propose more initiatives. So thanks for your work. I know that uh, the four groups have worked very hard in order to present uh, their experience, but also suggestions for the future. So we are looking forward to hearing from what you are saying, but also to help you to present these proposals to institutions. Thank you very much and enjoy your day here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Angelo. And now a few words from Professor Massimiliano Montini, uh, the uh, Vice Director to the European Citizenship uh, uh, of the University of Siena. Thank you very much. Um, welcome to everybody, to the students and the participants here uh, in this room. And uh, thanks to Fondazione Montrepaschi for hosting us. And uh, greetings also to those who are uh, participating online with us today. Um, I'm here to bring my greetings as um, scientific director of Europe Direct Siena. Europe Direct is a, a center for promoting information and knowledge about the European Union based at the University of Siena. It is more than 10 years that we are um, working here at our university, as, as many of the people who are present today know very well. We are working closely with the um, office in Rome of the Rappresentanza of the European Commission. Um, what is important in particular in, in, this, in this moment now is to to talk and to share experience about students' mobility. And this is the topic today. And we are keen on, we are looking forward to listen to the experience of our uh, young students in, in their recent experience. We have been, uh, in my case, I've been uh, Erasmus students myself uh, some time ago. So I still remember, and I still always uh, think that this is really an experience worth doing, uh, Erasmus for students, but also all other experiences of trainership and other opportunities for exchanging ideas, for, for learning how other European system work. And really this time that you spend abroad in Europe is always worthwhile. This is my, my message uh, as a, a true believer on the, on the European integration. Uh, the other point that is particularly important today and this year and on this Euro Europe Diet is working hard with the other Europe Diet centers all over Europe is to uh, promote um, a major um, presence of our young people in the next European elections. As you, as you know, in June, there will be the, the elections of the European Parliament, which happen every five years. For some of you might be the first time that you can vote for the European Parliament. For some people might be the second time. And it's really important that young people uh, go to vote. They are, they are present. They, they, they use the opportunity that democ European democracy gives us to express our vote, to send our representatives to the European Parliament. This is very important. As you know, the share of people who are voting in Europe is still around 50%. So it's not very high. But the, the good message is, is that we, we participated to a very big campaign five years ago in the latest European elections in 2019. And we managed all together to raise the share of people who went to vote. And what is more important that the share of young people who went to vote was much higher in 2019 than in previous European elections. So I hope that this time will be the same and you will also participate to the European election. We'll also convince your friends, other young people to be there 
to vote and to make your voice heard. So thank you very much for being here today and for participating to this effort with us. And thank you very much, Professor Montini. Uh, I also want to thank you all the people who are joined uh, online for uh, attending this webinar. And uh, also Professor Alessandra Viviani, which joined us uh, in presence just now, the Rector's Delegate for the Erasmus Program of the University of Siena. Thank you very much, Alessandra. Uh, and, uh, but now I have the great pleasure um, to, to give the, uh, the words to uh, our keynote speaker, uh, which is uh, Dottoressa Marcella Gargano, the General Director of higher education uh, institution at the Italian Ministry of uh, uh, the Universities and Research. So Marcella, if you are online, the floor yes. is yours. Thank you very yes. much for being here. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon and um, hello everyone. My name is Marcella Gargano, and uh, I am the General Director for the Higher Education Institutions at the Italian Ministry of Universities and Research. I thank uh, Prof. Uh, Angelo Riccaboni for the invitation to give my testimony at today's webinar, and to his team was my gratitude and highest esteem for its dedication to building a better real world of knowledge for young generation and with young generations. Today's webinar is dedicated to the theme of mobility in its broadest sense as an opportunity for young um, generations to move and, and educate themselves wherever they want in Europe. And above all, to make people understand how this state of mind of freedom of movement and education is now so inherent in the way we Europeans think that only by imagining ourselves being deprived of it can we understand its real extent. And that is why it's essential that the young generation of European citizens born and raised in a system of rights and rules guarantee our freedoms, be a conscious and an active, an active part in protecting and implementing them. And uh, this could be done through participation in the, the life of the European Union. As you know, the most uh, extensive and important program of mobility involving European youths is the, is the Erasmus program and uh, I'm now going to talk about it. First, because the, uh, the Erasmus program has transformed the educational landscape in Europe, fostering student mobility, cultural exchange and academic enrichment. Second, because in this period leading up to European elections, many young people will be called upon to participate in their civic engagement and so in the life of the European Union. Approximately uh, 35 of young students who studied abroad and had an Erasmus experience believe that participation in the, the Erasmus program has made them more interested in a willing to vote in European elections. But let's see what the Erasmus program is. The definition, the, the, definition uh, the Erasmus program of, officially established in 1987 is a flagship initiative of the European Union aimed at promoting student mobility within Europe. Its uh, objectives are to enhance the quality and reinforce the European dimension of higher education through international cooperation and exchange. The etymology of the, term, of the term Erasmus refers to Erasmus da Rotterdam, as all of you probably know, a leading scholar and inspiring lecturer during the Renaissance period, who traveled extensively in Europe to teach and study at a number of universities. But furthermore, the word Erasmus also serves as the 
as the acronym of the European Community Action Scheme for Mobility of Universities Students. The program is student-centered, designed to provide students with opportunities for studying and gaining international experience through three main actions, learning mobility of individuals, cooperation among organizations and institutions, which involves an important and great effort on behalf of institutions. Credits are recognized by different institutions. And first and third support to policy development and cooperation. Another aspect of cooperation between institutions is the realization of the European website, the single digital gateway, which has been devised as a tool useful for mobile for mobility. Uh, mobility holds many opportunities in achieving and expanding life plans. For this reason, Europe has developed a web portal aimed at helping European youths and all citizens to, ac to access information, services, assistance across in the European Union. Single Digital Gateway, uh, the Europe, uh, uh, the Your Europe portal, this is the, the link, is the um, uh, European Union Single Digital Gateway that can help you find European and national online sources with all the, the relevant information you need to live, work, study, shop, travel, or do business anywhere in the uh, European Union. Single Digital Gateway is designed to ensure interoperability between different national systems and databases, allowing for easy exchange of information and integration of services across uh, EU member states. The program has evolved through the years from its uh, initial focus on higher education to a program that now includes education, training, youth and sport. For this reason, the program has been renamed Erasmus Plus. How does the program impact on students' lives? The program allows university students to study or work abroad for a period of a three to 12 months as part of their degree program. This experience enables students to enhance their academic and personal development, improve language skills, and gain intercultural competencies. Erasmus program uh, facilitates cross-cultural friendship and relationship. It promotes tolerance and empathy and builds a sense of belonging within a large European community of learners. And also it has broadened to scope of its priorities, including four overreaching priorities such as green transition, digital transformation, inclusion and diversity. Marcella, sorry to interrupt you. This is uh, Marta from SDSN. I just wanted to let you know that we are seeing the view of, with your notes on the site, and you may want to do a full screen of your presentation. Just to let you know, we're seeing the... Okay, yeah, that's correct. Now we see it better. No, there is, yeah. there is, there is the part of the, of the left side that... But we, we still see your notes underneath, just so, okay. so you know. Okay, uh, just uh, in case you weren't aware of it. Please, okay. please uh, go ahead, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, um, supporting green transition, addressing digital transformation, promoting social inclusion and diversity, as well as fostering stronger participation in democratic life, common values, and civil engagement. How does the program impact on European Union? Doing an experience abroad enables the students to have a strong sense of European identity and democratic values, expressing their opinion about the European Union. And um, the other that you can see in, uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this slide, uh, like, uh, for example, have a greater sense of European identity, 
uh, are more optimistic for their upcoming employment status, uh, identify the EU as a way to create a better future for younger people, or trust more the capabilities of their generation. Percentage of Erasmus students who vote. Erasmus students are more likely to vote in European election. In 2014, 81% uh, of Erasmus students voted in European election. As you can see, the implementation of the program involves the work of many actors. Erasmus in numbers show the success the programs has had up to date. In conclusion, the Erasmus program is fundamental within European higher education. It fosters student mobility, intercultural exchange, and academic collaboration is very important in terms of employment opportunities. Those who have had them are more likely to work than those who have not. Plus 14% is a new push for European democracy. In fact, it's a reminder to new generation to use the hard won right to vote. Minorities, also have to write to be represented. There is a strong cooperation between institutions to realize in the future the European degree. This cooperation is carried on by University Alliance, which represents an innovative effort to reshape the higher education landscape in Europe. As one of the flagship initiatives of the European Strategy for Universities, the Alliance aim to ensure the competitiveness of uh, EU higher education institutions and to promote European values and identity. The goal is to reach a total of 16 alliances between European universities, involving more than uh, 15,000 uh, higher education institutions by uh, mid-2024. So far, 51 alliances have been created, involving more than uh, 4,030 universities and 35 Italian institutions in particular. Joint European degree is not awarded by an European body. It doesn't aim to replace national degree, will be voluntarily offered by universities. In conclusion, what has been done? We have focused on three main elements crucial for mobility. The Erasmus Plus program, the website Single Digital Gateway, alliance between European universities. The response was very good. Institutions are working hard for successful results. Therefore, it is important that young people who are the main actors in this WIT project actively participate to the life of the European Union in order to maintain and improve the democratic institutions we have built so far. Thank you so much. Simone, we cannot hear you. You are muted. Thank you very much, Marcella, for this uh, interesting uh, intervention. And uh, we ask you to to remain to stay online for uh, some uh, questions uh, during the discussion. Um, um, now uh, there is uh, the panel with the students uh, that. Uh, um, have worked uh, together, coordinated by Cinzia Angeli and uh, Professoressa Alessandra Viviani, uh, within the soft skill courts, uh, coordinating with others. So I want to thank you also, uh, Lisa Vannuccini, Alessandro Ortolani, and Giulio Sellari, which have been co collaborated uh, to with the, with the, this course and with the students. So now uh, the students that have to 
present their parts, their ideas and their thoughts are uh, Martina Marinelli, Ginevra Rovetini, Francesca Carriero, and Gabriel Ciorsilia. So Martina, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are here to talk about Erasmus, a program that offers European students the possibility to live and study abroad. Erasmus is not uh, only a study experience, but uh, it is a unique opportunity to grow as a person, to enrich your cultural background and to develop new skills. On the European map, we can see through words what Erasmus means for European students. It means networking, international experience, personal growth, opportunities and sharing. We analyzed the data uh, on Erasmus from uh, the Almaraura website. At first, uh, we can see that uh, parents' education and socioeconomic status uh, influence the possibility to access uh, on a mobility program. There are differences between students with educated families and students without educated families. Students from educated families are more likely to participate in these programs. Then we can see that uh, um, despite the impact of the pandemic, uh, um, there are uh, uh, differences uh, in uh, disciplinary groups that participate in Erasmus programs and uh, uh, languages students have a higher rate in participating. Regarding the destination, Spain remains the most popular destination followed by France, Germany and Portugal. And we can see that uh, study abroad experiences uh, remain stable until 2020. And then uh, uh, there was a decrease, uh, probably due to the pandemic restrictions. There are a lot of reasons for students to do an Erasmus experience. First of all, it is an open-mindedness and self-discovery. When uh, you travel and uh, make uh, new experiences, it's like you open your eyes wider and uh, you um, can develop uh, uh, your personal and professional skills. You can get uh, for this uh, better job opportunities too. And uh, you can learn about new culture because uh, you meet people from uh, all over the world with uh, different traditions, uh, um, ideas and ways of living. A student can also stepping out of the comfort zone and strengthening European identity. Moving on, we can see uh, the historical evolution of uh, Erasmus program. Erasmus was uh, convinced by Sofia Corradi in 1969, but uh, it was developed only in 1987 uh, for university students. Over the years, Erasmus has grown significantly, and today it is a program for students, trainees, uh, professors, and professional uh, figures, and um, it promotes uh, mobility, cooperating, and professional and personal uh, skills. Erasmus aligns with uh, um, several uh, SDGs set by the European um, Union and um, for uh, create a, a sustainable future for all of us. Uh, we can say that Erasmus uh, is not a benefit for uh, the individual students, uh, but uh, it uh, also promotes uh, a, a sustainable future. And today we are here to um, uh, suggest uh, how Erasmus can be a um, fundamental pillar of European citizenship. 
we have um, we propose uh, some ideas divided in three uh, area uh, engage support and share Uh, hi everyone. Uh, we talk to. Uh, I want to talk about uh, an online platform designed to help students uh, who uh, are considering going on Erasmus Exchange. We know how challenging and also confusing uh, uh, it uh, can be to choose the right destination. Uh, so uh, our platform, our platform comes into play, making your decision process, process easier uh, and more informed. Let's take a look of our platform. Okay. Uh, this platform is divided into three parts, three pages. Uh, the home page, the tips and advice pages, and the digital tutor page. Uh, for the first part, uh, we have what is Erasmus, so uh, an uh, overview of what the, the platform of Erasmus uh, offers and what type of Erasmus uh, you can consider, for example, Erasmus Plus or uh, Erasmus uh, for Studies. In the second part, we also have what is this platform, uh, with online platform for, so the explanation, this platform was created to share experience. But uh, the important part is the, the part of tips and advices. Uh, in this part, uh, we have divided by destination tips uh, or places to visit, uh, possible trainers and much, much more uh, to uh, suggest uh, um, for uh, everyone want to go to Erasmus. Let's check an example, Dublin. Uh, this is uh, a, my ex roommate uh, that uh, go to Dublin. Uh, she said, hi, it's Tulia. I'm going to give you a couple of advice on Dublin. I studied, studied in Trinity College for a semester and I also had the chance, the chance to live in the university accommodation inside, inside it. The English American University system is very different from what I was used to do to in Italy. So make sure to pay attention on how everything works. Beside the orientation week and the very start, there are lots of other channels to ask for help, whatever question you might have, such as tutor, e.g. pages, offices, and other. The uh, university life is not just work, uh, though, because societies make it all better. There are dozens of, the, of them, and uh, you'll be able to join what is more in your, in your taste. Dublin is a capital, but it doesn't feel too big and uh, dispersive. On the other end, it's very multicultural. Working in the city center, you will hear speaking languages from all over the world. So this is an example uh, in, in to understand which which uh, will be the structure of uh, this review. And um, I want to tell you that uh, um, this the girl uh, um, works uh, there. So it's uh, an important uh, thing to do. Uh, so the, the last part is digital tutor. And um, okay. What I do. One, personalized guidance. As your digital tutor, I act as your personalized guide throughout your Erasmus journey. I'll help you navigate the application process, choose the courses that align with your interests and goals, and prepare you logistically for your adventure abroad. Think of me as your mentor, always available to answer your questions and offer guidance. Two, academic support. I understand how important academic success is to you. That's why I offer tailored academic support, providing you with personalized learning resources and recommending courses that suit your aspirations. If you need extra help with specific subjects, I'm here to offer virtual tutoring sessions to ensure you excel in your studies.
This is an important uh, aspect of uh, Erasmus programs, uh, language support and certifications. Uh, as you know, uh, participating in Erasmus programs requires uh, some level of language proficiency and uh, especially for, uh, for exams. Um, many students face uh, this common challenge, uh, but we have identify, uh, identified uh, potential solutions, uh, which are um, free uh, language courses. Uh, universities can offer free language courses before and during uh, the Erasmus program and creating a language uh, European passport um, that uh, allows students access to community certifications um, recognized throughout uh, the European the Erasmus system. Um, uh, um, another critical aspect is um, is uh, accommodation and uh, cost of living. Uh, currently, we can uh, uh, categorize uh, countries into three groups uh, of um, cost of living. Uh, the first one is, um, um, the group one is high, high cost of living. Um, so the students in these countries receive uh, uh, receive 350 euros per month. The second one is the medium, uh, I, uh, the medium cost of living. The students uh, here receive 300 uh, euros per month. And the last one is uh, the low cost of living. Uh, the monthly allowance is uh, uh, two, uh, 2,050 euros. Instead of, of, of this, we can um, assign each destination uh, its own bracket based on the cost of living index. Um, uh, now, Let's uh, shift our focus to inclusivity. Many Italian uh, universe, in many Italian universities, uh, transgender people uh, may require an alternative and uh, temporary profile. Uh, however, uh, these profile are not recognized, um, are not directly recognized, uh, even in the host universities of uh, um, of the Erasmus uh, cir circuit, and uh, this uh, excludes and discriminates uh, against these people. Thanks, Ginevra. As we've just heard, Erasmus Plus is already, is already really um, well equipped to continue into being an asset in the educational and personal growth uh, in the um, European uh, um, context. However, it is crucial that this uh, wonderful experience is not an end to itself. Furthermore, it has to have a real and long-term impact on our lives. That's why uh, we've envisioned something more for the aforementioned platform, which, is, uh, uh, which could make the journey even more impactful. This is the Erasmus Alumnus Tutor. With the goal of integration in mind, we believe that this figure, which is a veteran of at least one semester of mobility, uh, can add value to those students um, which are in the same shoes as the tutor at the beginning of the journey. The new Erasmus student will be remotely supported so that they have not only assistance in the, um, in the technical matters, but also guidance through human, cultural, and psychological issues and problems. On the other hand, the tutor will receive recognition for um, among uh, their own universities in terms of credits or uh, as a certified internship. So we have to reshape the Erasmus as we think of it, uh, not as a linear path, but rather uh, as a more circular and comprehensive path with an even greater focus on students, laying that uh, uh, the groundwork for a more integrated and multicultural Europe. Another turning point we propose concerns communication and sharing. Let's take Instagram, for instance. 
uh, one of the most uh, uh, social media platforms used by us, university students, which in recent years uh, uh, has integrated uh, also promotion and uh, information regarding events and opportunities such as Erasmus+. Plus. However, if we were to search for Erasmus+, Plus on the platform, we would find ourselves in wild waters. There isn't, as of today, a verified page that guarantees the rel reliability and safety of the published information. Without it, it's like searching a treasure in the sea. It's impossible. So um, it's absolutely necessary to find a digital space through which the European Commission can not only clearly advise anyone who wants to know more, but also interact directly with its participants to understand the issue or request firsthand. But what type of content would uh, make a difference for us? We thought about one which is more uh, a static piece of content, such as this one you see, or a more dynamic one, a short-lived one, which is the real, which, uh, which uh, will be posted directly by the personal profiles of Erasmus students who through their daily lives and tax will show and sell the added value of the experience, uh, curiosities and pieces of advice. The reel will be all, um, also present, uh, all present on uh, the Erasmus Plus platform so that we can have an album of feedback and direct testimonials easily accessible to anyone. So what you have just witnessed is the result of a collaborative effort of a dedicated team of nearly 50 individuals, including a student, mentors from UCNA uh, alumni and various guests for our university's bodies and associations to whom we owe a big thank you. Throughout this uh, project, uh, we've explored the transformative potential of international mobility in fostering a more cohesive and equitable society. So we had some challenges, but we worked together implementing inclusive policies and best practices in a dialogue between diverse personalities and perspectives. Therefore, it, mark, it marks a significant stride towards a more united, inclusive, and supportive community, both here in Siena and as a contribution to the whole European Union. The democratic environment of the very uh, European Union enable us to engage in such discussions about shaping our future. We have a plethora of tools and avenues to translate our ideas into a single action and ensure our voices are heard as active citizens of our society. However, this is just the beginning of our journey. The next step is to spread our findings among those who can effectively influence the future of programs such like Erasmus+. Plus. To achieve this, we have the invaluable right and responsibility to exercise our collective power in the form of voting this coming June. So until next time, let's remind ourselves that every bond and every community, regardless of its uh, size or the grade of diversity, adds another hue to the magnificent canvas that is the European Union. Thank you. So thank you very much to the students that have uh, just presented, but also to all to all the others that have participated in this great work uh, for highlighting the relevance of uh, European Union and the mobility for students uh, uh, within within the European uh, uh, space. Let's say, and uh, now it's time to raise questions from the floor here in presence and also online using the chat of Zoom. So please raise your question if you have or your comments or your thoughts uh, about this topic. Uh, and uh, I will address your, your points to all the speakers that have intervened just now. So it is, is there any question from the from the floor here in presence. Okay, Cinzia, would you like to to raise question? If you if you come if you come here. Many thanks for 
to all the speaker, uh, very interesting. Uh, I was just uh, thinking what can be done, uh, I don't know who can answer, by the way, in terms of a cost of living, uh, it seems like a very uh, tough area in order to make like the program more inclusive and open. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, this question is for Marcella, but what can be done in order to make like the um, subsidy more like uh, in line with the cost of living of the different uh, place uh, in order also to ensure like the participation in all the different country across Europe and not like just moving to the uh, cheapest one. Uh, I don't know, Marcella, if you can, if you hear. Okay. Thank you, Cinzia. And we uh, support uh, students that uh, uh, make Erasmus program and Erasmus Plus, and we uh, support uh, um, single students, but uh, in uh, particular the universities uh, with the um, our um uh, found uh, that is uh, the that uh, financing the universities of um, our uh, system and um, now there is a, a an important uh, uh, moment uh, to improve this uh, this program and so it's very important to uh, guarantee uh, resources because the the cost of, of of life in uh, in uh, in Europe are very different between uh, uh, countries, and so uh, we uh, we believe that it's important to uh, guarantee the same uh, uh, opportunities to uh, our students, um, and uh, and so we 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 think that. Uh, uh, are um, necessary uh, more resources to improve uh, this program. Okay, thank, thank you, Marcella. Thank you for... Uh... Hi. Yes. Alessandro, good afternoon, everybody. Can I? Sure. Yes, sure. So first question is regarding the experience. Uh, this is to the student. So the experience of putting together all your effort uh, to come up with this kind of presentation. And the first question is about uh, um, what's, what are your takeaway from this kind of experience? Uh? And the second is how do you feel uh, being heard by the university and by the institutions that are, that are here to um, listen to what you need to what you have to say about the Erasmus project about uh, the mobility. So it's um, around the experience that you went through building together this kind of presentation, this kind of recommendation to the institution. Thank you. Thank you for the, it's okay, on. So thank you for the question. So regarding the project, we had, um, so to shorten bridges and to broaden views. So basically we had uh, to, um, some challenges regarding, you know, facing uh, uh, each other's personalities. So we have to work on that, but um, even diversities in terms of experiences, because Many of the 50 people aforementioned um, uh, haven't uh, done yet the Erasmus experience. So it was uh, challenging in the way of uh, finding out uh, all the uh, stories between um, uh, underneath Erasmus. So we had to uh, talk to ESN, which is uh, an association here in Siena, but uh, you know, you have it uh, on all, um, in all Europe. But uh, we had a great time, and by doing that, we we didn't know, uh, only grew uh, as you know people, but also I think at 
citizens of Europe, because uh, by simply speaking in English, which is, you know, a common language, but is not so common in every just uh, defeated another, you know, uh, obstacle towards inclusivity and equality. So I think in the end, uh, it was a lot, but a great lot in, in a positive way, the best way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there are no more questions online. Uh, something more from the floor here in presence. Okay, if not, uh, I think uh, just in order to, to uh, be uh, on time, I'm very glad uh, to give the floor to for the closing remarks to Professoressa Patrizia Lombardi, uh, the president of the Italian Network of Universities for Sustainability. So Patrizia, uh, thank you for joining and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. Yes, I, I have uh, been uh, following all the uh, webinar and thanks a lot for inviting me because uh, it was very useful, uh, especially to hear students' stories. Uh, I would like to conclude by uh, with my five minutes just to uh, focus on uh, the need for accelerating uh, transformative change because at the end, um, of this uh, uh, webinar and the focus on uh, student uh, and European uh, um, uh, educational area, I believe that uh, is the need for uh, understanding that we are not doing well in terms of uh, uh, in terms of activities in terms of our ecological and social transition. We are. Uh, been impacting uh, on the earth uh, uh, in a very strong way um, and six uh, out of the nine uh, planetary limits uh, are uh, in uh, really crisis. Uh, we are not achieving uh, uh, the uh, target of sustainable development agenda um, and the progress uh, uh, is really critical. 30% of target are into reverse uh, as well. So it's really uh, important that uh, um, the priority set uh, from the European Union uh, can continue uh, to, um, uh, to be uh, strongly implemented. And uh, I believe that uh, the um, educational European area is crucial for uh, building this, uh, for uh, highlighting uh, um, a knowledge exchange that is uh, intercultural and that can promote uh, um, diversity as well, um, and also opportunity for all students to be part of this uh, European agenda. So is it a critical that we uh, and student uh, has the opportunity to build the appropriate skills for achieving sustainable development, uh, considering the change and the and the challenge we uh, and they are uh, exposed at this time. And the problem in Italy is particularly critical because Italy is experiencing a big gap in terms of tertiary education, in terms of uh, ability to mm, meet the, ne the need of uh, employers, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the um, um, uh, possibility for uh, all genders, uh, uh, young people to be part of this working community. And uh, uh, unfortunately, there are uh, problems that are relating to the um, not uh, uh, the, the need problems that are uh, those uh, or neither in employment nor in education and training. You see Italy, especially male are uh, the uh, at last uh, uh, ranking position for uh, in uh, uh, European countries uh, and uh, and also the employment rate in Italy is very very critical. So giving this uh, picture that is quite pessimistic, we really need to reinforce uh, this space, this European space. 
and uh, our uh, Agenda 2030 and our university are trying to uh, make the best for impacting uh, in a positive way, uh, considering uh, the activities that uh, uh, they are doing for uh, helping uh, um, Italy in doing this. Uh, the Italian Network of Universities for Sustainable Development, which I represent, uh, are, is trying to do this uh, with the uh, all the uh, possibility that uh, we can, uh, we we are really just uh, um, a network with 86 universities involved and a technical table on capacity building and the student hub with uh, uh, all these uh, 800 people uh, involved plus uh, about 1,800,000 students uh, uh, that can uh, have uh, um, a positive opportunity for changing uh, what we are uh, we, we just represented. This is why we wanted also to have a network at the regional level to be closer with communities and working with the different topics, especially in education. We have put forward also guidelines for achieving. Uh, a transversal course uh, and increasing soft skills uh, um, as well as sustainability framework in all uh, educational uh, um, courses in Italy. These are the figures and we hope that uh, um, and this number is going to increase. Uh, just uh, the final uh, uh, news is that we um, in this year we are to revise the manifesto that we set up uh, on 2019 and all university involved uh, are focusing on the trajectory towards sustainable development uh, to 2030. Uh, also at international level, uh, we are quite uh, uh, in, involved uh, in negotiating uh, um, uh, and policy negotiation to support policy negotiation together with all the other university network around the world. Uh, I conclude by saying that networking uh, is really the key for building the future. And thanks again for the opportunity of uh, uh, well being part of this community and go together to the 2030 uh, target. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrizia. Thank you for your interesting uh, words. And um, Alessandra, it's time for you to, to tell us something about this experience uh, as a delegate to the Erasmus program of the University of Siena. So, thank you, thank Simone. Uh, please, first of all, let me thank again the, the students, uh, the 50, generally speaking, and the four uh, in particular, because it takes a little bit of courage to stand up and speak. So thank you very much to all of you. It has been very, very interesting listening to you in those days and looking at the process that led you to concentrate your attention on certain aspects of the Erasmus uh, program. And I think a couple of things are relevant in what you said. Well, all the things you said are relevant, but to me, a couple of particularly relevant. Uh, first of all, you did manage to speak about the importance of mobility and the importance of sharing values and building up a Europe that is more and more close to citizens without having had the experience of mobility yourself. And I think this is great because it means that imagination and, and creativity are leading forces and I would hope that after working on these ideas, you will be a mobile student at the University of Siena in, in the next coming semesters. Please take this opportunity. What you wrote, uh, what you researched, what you analyzed about the fact that mobility, studying abroad does change lives, does transform. It's true, I can tell you from my personal experience and from the experience of many of other um, former Erasmus students. And another relevant thing that you point out is the aspect concerning inclusion. And I think 
This is the real challenge of the European Union. This is also why it's so important to go and vote on June. Um, and Erasmus does his part, let's say, as, as a program in building inclusion in various ways, but there is still a lot to be done. So it is important that we keep in mind that, as you said, we don't do mobility abroad, we don't do Erasmus per se, but as it is an instrument towards an end, and the end is building a more inclusive Europe, sharing democratic values. And this, as you said, can be done only exercising our right to vote. And the last thing I would like here as, as a person representing the institution, please do not disappear. Now that you have ideas, uh, keep on sharing them with us. There is a lot we can learn from you. There is always the possibility of doing better. We're very proud of the role the University of Siena has played in creating the Erasmus program, but we want to play a role in making the Erasmus program better, but we need you. Uh, it, we need, it, we cannot do it like top down, we need bottom up. And so please, all your beautiful ideas, let's work together. We might be able, you know, to realize one of your suggestions. So I thank you for what you have done so far and for what hopefully you will do in the, in the near future. And let's see in June and go, <laughs> let's, let's meet in June when we vote for the European elections. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you very much. Um, we are perfectly on time to, to close this webinar. I want to uh, thank you very much uh, again, all the speakers of uh, today, all the people that attended uh, online. We had uh, more or less 160 enrolled uh, person uh, online and uh, 50 people here in presence. Thank you also to the um, SDSN Secretary of Staff, and in particular, Maria and Marta, who supported very much uh, uh, with this webinar uh, in, in, the, in the back office and other colleagues. Uh, so we wait you uh, in the next webinar on May uh, 2 uh, with Carbon Neutrality, uh, hosted by SDSN Portugal, and May 22 with Inclusive Society, uh, hosted by SDSN Germany. So uh, thank you very much.